Billy Bross from BillyBrew.com and I'm going to show you how to wash your yeast. So you want to wash your yeast for a few reasons. You might have a really good strain of yeast that you want to keep using, it's working well for you, you like the character that it gives you in your beer, and you want to keep using that. Uh, you might also want to use it to save money. You know, yeast is not cheap, it's usually six to ten dollars or more per batch. And so by washing it, you can reuse it and make that yeast free for upcoming batches. So this method is based on Bernie Brewers from Homebrew Talk. Just want to give credit to him. It's a slight variation of his excellent write-up on the forum. And if you're a home brewer, I'm sure the site looks familiar. You have beer on top and a layer of trube on the bottom. And in there is viable yeast, dead yeast, hot particles and protein, some fats and other nasty stuff. But what you want to do is separate out the healthy yeast from all that other junk. So you're going to do this on either your bottling day or your transferring day when you get the beer off the trube and that way you can separate out the viable yeast. So to wash the yeast, to separate it out from all that other gunk, we're going to use boiled and cooled water. And the reason we do that is because boiled water, for one, is sanitized, which is key. And two, it takes away all the oxygen. And what that will do will make the yeast go into hibernation. It'll make them go to sleep for a while, which is key because we don't want them to wake up and use all their energy until we're ready to brew again with it. So we mix it with boiled and cooled water, stick it in the fridge for a while, and take it out when we're ready to brew again and use that yeast. So things you're going to need to wash your yeast. First, you need a large glass jar like this. This is a one gallon pickle jar, works really well. A lot of guys also use half gallon growlers and they work pretty well also. So this is where your initial yeast washing takes place. You're going to mix boiled and cooled water with the trube and the yeast in here and the yeast will separate out. And then you're going to pour it into four pint-sized mason jars like this. You don't have to use four. Some guys use two, some use eight. Uh, four is a good middle ground though. That works pretty well. You're also going to need a funnel and a batch of sanitizer. I'm going to use star sand, but you can also use something like I do for. And finally, you need a big pot. So the first step is you want to boil and cool one gallon of water. The reason you do this first is because it takes a long time to cool. So you might want to do it the night before or at least a few hours before you do the yeast washing. So while the water is heating up and boiling, you're going to want to sanitize your glass jars. And you'll see a lot of guys actually boil the jars in with the water to sanitize them. And that definitely works. The reason I don't do it is that I found it's a real pain to pull out a one gallon glass jar full of boiling hot water at the very end. So I do it this way, plus I'm usually doing this on a bottling or transferring day, so I have a batch of sanitizer ready to go anyways. So I just use that. Um, you can do it either way, either boiling the jars in the pot or using sanitizer. Either way is fine. So after your water's done boiling, let it cool down in the stove for about five minutes and then pour it into your big jar. Use a funnel if you have to, just make sure that that's sanitized also. So I've got a gallon of boiled water in here and I'm going to pop it into the fridge to cool down. At this point, go ahead and transfer or bottle your beer. So if you're bottling or transferring your homebrew, go ahead and put the airlock back on this carboy while you take care of that. I also like to give the mouth of this carboy a spray with star sand just to be safe. When you're done, take the jar of cooled and boiled water out of the fridge. If your jar of water was in the fridge overnight or for a long time and it's really cold, let it come up to room temperature just to make sure you don't shock the yeast. Otherwise, you're good to go. So let's move on. This is what's left in the carboy. We have a little bit of beer on top and we have dead yeast, active yeast, protein, fats, and other particles down in the bottom. So what we want to do now is wash this bottom part and separate out the good, healthy, viable yeast from all the other junk. What you're going to do now is take your sanitized funnel and dump in your gallon of water. Then put the airlock back on and shake up the carboy. Now give it about 20 minutes and you'll start to see different layers forming in the liquid. So after 20 minutes you can see that there's four pretty distinct layers here. There is the bottom layer right here, which is mainly hops. That's the dark one. There's a the large layer right here, which is other trube like proteins and fats. There's this creamy milky band right here, which is the yeast. That's the good stuff and we want this. And then there's a thin layer of beer on top. So now I'm going to try to pour off only the yeast and I know I'll get some beer in there, but I'm going to try to leave as much behind as possible of this band and this bottom band. I poured out a little over half a gallon and I got some of the bottom stuff in here, but it's nothing to worry about because we're going to wash this again. And I'm going to shake it up now and get those big chunks to separate and fall to the bottom, leaving the yeast suspended in the liquid. 
And that's why I like having this bigger jar because I have this headspace where I have room to really separate it out. And so I'm gonna do that and then let this sit for about 20 minutes. So I let this one sit for a little bit longer, about 40 minutes. And you can see that there's only a little bit of troop, the dark stuff on the bottom, and most of this is healthy yeast with a little bit of beer on top. So now I'm gonna pour this whole thing out into the four pint-sized mason jars. Like you did the first time, try to pour this out while leaving as much of the dark stuff on the bottom behind as possible. Go ahead and put the four mason jars into the fridge. This is two days later and you can see that it's starting to clear up. And four days later, the yeast has really settled out. Okay, so it's about a week later and this has cleared up nicely. You can see I have a great layer of yeast on the bottom and pretty clear liquid on top. So what I'll do now is put this back in the fridge and wait until brew day and take it out and I'll decant the liquid on top or pour it off and then make a yeast starter out of the yeast on the bottom. And I would do that just like I normally would with a smack pack or a vial. And you can also see that I labeled it. This is a great idea. So you know which strain you have in case you end up having a whole bunch of these in your fridge. Now I know there's gonna be a lot of questions about this process. It's a little bit involved, but I don't wanna drag on for too long. So I'll answer a couple of the really major ones and then answer the rest in the post and you can ask me anything down in the comments, of course. Okay, so a major question is, do you harvest the yeast from the primary or the secondary? I harvest it from the primary. Reason being is that it's healthier yeast. It's more flocculent, it did its job and then dropped out. It hasn't been in the beer for too long with higher alcohol levels, so it's not as stressed out as the yeast in the secondary. And I know it's dirtier, it's more of a mess because you have the hot particles and the trube in there, but the fact that it's healthier makes it worth it. Next big question, can you pitch the beer right onto the yeast cake, so the cake of yeast on the bottom of the fermenter? Yeah, you could, but I don't recommend it. Reason being, the whole process that I did was to separate out the healthy yeast from all that crap, and by putting the beer on the yeast cake, you're mixing it in with all the dead yeast and the troop and the hot particles and all that stuff that you don't want in a fresh batch of beer. So you could do it, but I don't recommend it. If you still have questions, I'll be happy to answer them down in the comments. Otherwise, thanks for watching and take care.